Are you asleep at the wheel? That's the question we're asking today, and we're talking about marriage. Men and women each have some biblical responsibilities that just have to happen when it comes to forming that godly marriage. But in reality, our society has pulled us in so many different directions that sometimes it's hard to even know if we're doing those those things correctly or not. So today we're going to talk about leadership in the home, leadership in the marriage, and we're calling it a sleep at the wheel. Dave and <laughs> Tracy Sellers from Vows to Keep are with us again today. Let's get started talking about this topic. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we've noticed as we've worked with couples is that um, oftentimes Christian men are really well-intentioned, but sometimes they are literally asleep at the wheel. And I think this is oftentimes because we're spending our resources, we, we're spending the, the time that we have, the energy that we have um, on things that we shouldn't. Uh, sometimes we're, we're driving further than we should in a day and we're driving in directions that we shouldn't be going. And I kind of liken it to um, you know, when we need sleep, right? We, we all know we need sleep every day. Um, we have a night without sleep, we end up with a day that is not very effective. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is true with God and, and your relationship with God in your marriage. Um, if you don't have God as a, as a daily part of your life, um, as a husband trying to be a spiritual leader, you're, you're not going to be very effective in that. And I think we can see that played out. Without him, it's easy to become a man who's hopeless and sometimes faithless in what you're doing in, in your marriage. It's um, something that we see a pattern of oftentimes even in uh, well-intentioned Christian men uh, that they, they have a pattern that go long enough that they can basically become very numb to the things that ultimately they should be paying close attention to. It gets kind of scary. Um, you know, it's, it's been said with, with drivers, if you're, if you're sleeping, if you're really drowsy, you're three times more likely to crash than, than if you're not. And the same thing is true in your marriage. I, I know I've found myself at times, and I think a lot of men will we'll find themselves like, wow, I just got to my final destination, but I don't remember anything mm -hmm. along the way. So it's like we, we, we took the drive, but without any of the mental investment to actually do it well. And in your marriage as a husband, I think there'll be times where you'll find yourself in that same position. You'll find like, wow, we just went through something and I didn't think about this and it didn't necessarily result in a crash, but it could have. Mm -hmm. they're, they're really alarming, eye-opening moments. I've been reading in Hebrews 12, um, and, and this has kind of been for me a little bit of the rumble strips. You know, you're on the road and you get off slightly and they, they kind of buzz at you and you, oh boy, I got to get back on the road here. Um, Hebrews 12, verse 14 has is, is got something that I feel, feel compelled to share, I guess. Um, it says, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and be holy. Without holiness, no one's going to see the Lord. And I think that we can know that we're being a good spiritual leader in our home when there's such a hunger that we have that we see that in our wives we see that in our kids and we see the effects of that and they see the effects of that in us if you're not seeing some of those kind of things I think you have to really take a step back and look at you know what are the things I need to change how can I how can I go from where I am to where I need to be you know, we could talk about that a lot, and I don't want to interrupt you because I'm sure you have more to say, but as I, as a wife, think about those things, it could be easy for me to sit back and say, well, my husband should be doing this, and my husband should be doing that, and why is he not doing this? <coughs> but I really should look at myself and go, am I doing the proper things to be setting my husband up to be that leader he's supposed to be? Tracy, what are we wives supposed to be doing in this whole thing? Yeah, I think it's easy to sit in judgment to our husbands and think A, B, C, those things aren't getting done. And then women default to taking that leadership role. Yeah, yeah. If there's not a leader in the room, someone's going to automatically become that. So wives might need to use a little patience to let their husbands develop into that spiritual leader because we want to be in control. We want someone to be in control. We want someone to follow. Mm -hmm. If they're not going to do it, then we will. But that's not the biblical approach to it. We can be our husband's biggest cheerleader as he develops into that man that God has created him to be. A lot of times it's our words and our demands. I want this to happen. And we demand it so much to the point that our husbands kind of take a step back. Okay, I don't want to deal with her wrath any longer, so I'm just going to let her have her way. And then they kind of cut themselves off from being that leader. And they get discouraged, especially when they try to lead. It might not go quite the way we want it to. Mm -hmm then we critique them rather than encourage them. Oh, you are just 
convicting me of something I said just yesterday. <laughs> I knew it was wrong. No, God brought you here to remind me again. But we have new chances. Well, we're talking you know. to ourselves on this one too. We don't have it all figured out by any respect. Yesterday, not a stellar day in the marriage world of David and Tracy. But you know what? That's okay. We're sinners and we've got a gracious God. Absolutely. I think, you know, another thing that would be really important to, to point out, there's probably a lot of husbands who would maybe be hearing this and saying, okay, I, I think this is a weakness of mine. Mm -hmm. I have no idea where to start. Mm -hmm. I, I have no idea how to change mm -hmm. um, from the, the status quo. And I think that there's some very small but practical steps that we as husbands can take. Um, one of the things that I found, especially with our kids and with my wife, is just to talk very practically about where we sit with the Lord. Um, if there's a certain issue that we're dealing with, oftentimes I'll ask the question just in general to our family, mm -hmm. what does God's word ask us to do about this? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is I don't know, let's, let's actually spend some time and try and find something um, that will help guide us to, to make a decision. Uh, another very simple, small step is to just pray with your family, mm -hmm. uh, to pray over a meal, to pray as you're going to bed, and not about the food. Um, I mean, that's probably the canned thing that we often would do, but to really think critically about what are the needs that my family has today? What are the things I should be asking God for or about? What are the things we should be praising God for? And um, then taking that one step further, asking my children, asking my wife if they would lead prayer, um, you know, on some sort of rotation, just getting the whole family comfortable praying out loud. It's a huge step. It's a very sometimes small step, though, that, that starts um, the family going in the right direction. This is just one example. We probably could give lots of others. Well, and that, it, it actually sounds simpler than it may feel like because, mm -hmm. like, I may be able to point out all the things that I feel are my husband's faults that he should be fixing right now. But if I start approaching those, yeah. which I probably have too many times in the past, you know, he's going to watch this and probably going <laughs> to chuckle at me. But where am I getting? It's just an attack and attack and attack and we're creating. But we start in that prayer mode. Yeah. You know, what God can do. Yes. And I think we as wives have to step back and, and be patient. Mm -hmm. Be patient and let our husbands mm -hmm. step in and be willing to learn, let God guide them on how to lead. Yeah, there's a lot of times where husbands turn into the peacemakers, um, particularly where there might not be patience over an issue. Um, and I think God is very clear that he doesn't accept a husband who's just trying to pass by the situation. That's not a godly leader. A godly leader is a man who's going to step in and say, at the end of this, we need to be closer than we are when we started. And to apply the biblical principles that will help us to stay committed, uh, to help us to stay in tune with what is the biblical demands of that situation? Tracy, um, wives can sit back and not want to see this. They, they want instant change. Yes. But can you, can you kind of jump forward to people who are at home thinking, I don't think this is possible. Mm -hmm. Is it possible in time? Can things change? You better believe it. We serve not only an awesome God who is with us every step of the way, he's given us his word. And when we are willing to spend time with him, willing to apply it, even if the husband isn't, the wife can. She can start right where she's at because there's some things just practically that she can change. Just maybe zipping the lip every yeah. once in a while, <laughs> sitting back saying, babe, I, I believe in you. I, I trust you. I know that you're capable. And then when he trips and falls, helping him back up, but not critiquing, mm -hmm. great things. We've seen couples, even just recently, sitting down with us. The wife's like, how do I get him to lead? And she just wants to shake him around the neck. And as he starts to realize the truth of the scriptures, wow, what great things can happen. So a wife in that situation, I would ask her to pray for her husband specifically in this area. All right. Anything more you want to add? Nope. It's all there. Yep. Turn to God. God's got all the answers. You bet. We're talking with David and Tracy Sellers of Vows to Keep, and maybe you noticed, you heard Tracy say, when we sit down with couples, well, that is part of what they do. You should check out their ministry, vowstokeep.com, dot com, right? Not yeah. dot org or dot yeah, net, not com. anything. Vowstokeep.com, the address is right there on your screen. That is just one of the amazing things that they do, all with a goal of bringing God back into your marriage and seeing that threesome truly becoming it. God is the head, and the husband and wife is following along with the things that he has to say. Don't forget that you can rewatch all of our videos on our marriage series by going to our website, faithandfriends.wtlw.com.